Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about active bookshelves. Uh, the word active basically means that the amplification is built into the speaker. And so that's beneficial for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being that the form factor obviously decreases. And the second being that you don't have to worry about routing a bunch of wires. Uh, so for a modern household, um, this is the perfect solution. I do need to let people know that as far as I'm concerned, a passive setup will always outperform a active setup. Uh, but I do feel that active setups are, uh, you know, solve a very important problem where they provide uh, above average sound at a relatively affordable price. And a lot of the time I feel they uh, put you on the track to getting into hi-fi as a full-fledged hobby. Um, so for that reason, uh, I decided to make this video. Um, so we've got a few options there, uh, starting as low as maybe 12 grand. So it's a fairly affordable um, sort of section of the market to get into. Uh, with that being said, let's get started. Number one on the list is the Edifier 1280, which is available in a DB or DBS um, SKU. Uh, the S basically means uh, the ability to add a subwoofer. So one of the sort of drawbacks of bookshelves, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is this inability to move a lot of air simply by virtue of being small. And so that the number one sort of reflection of that is a lack of bass. Uh, so if you're the sort of guy who likes a lot of bass, I would suggest you look at the DBS. Uh, simply because it has the ability to add a sub. Edifier has a brilliant sub called the T5, which retails for about 10K. Uh, so you can add that on as a sort of a, uh, an add-on down the line um, and incredibly sort of boost the base aspect in, of, the, of the overall performance. Uh, the 1280 dB is phenomenal. I think the, the basic one without the subwoofer retails for about 10 grand, which is insane value for money. Okay, we're talking about a speaker system that has Bluetooth, uh, optical, coax, two RCA inputs. Um, it's really, you know, capable of handling anything that you can throw at it. Uh, it serves um, as a basic sort of stereo system. It can be a desktop based system. Um, it looks relatively nice. It comes with a small remote. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you need to get into listening to music, uh, specifically for the two channel approach, you know, left and right, there's nothing that I would look past besides the 1280. Uh, now, whether you pick up the DB or the DBS, I leave up to you. But if you're a bass head uh, and you do want that ability to add a subwoofer down the line, then I'd, I'd consider going in for the S option. At number two, we have another edifier model, the 1700 BT or BTS. Again, S meaning that you can add a subwoofer. Um, if you do need extra bass or you plan on adding maybe extra bass down the line, uh, I suggest you invest uh, the extra for the S version. Um, Overall, the 1700 has slightly better uh, drivers, a slightly more refined uh, tweeter. Um, overall, the sound is generally more refined in my opinion. So if the budget allows, I would suggest you look at upgrading to the 1700 PT slash BTS over the 1280. Uh, similar construction for both uh, MDF, both come with a remote, uh, both have the ability to control volume and tone from side buttons uh, on the main uh, speaker itself. Uh, again, extreme value for money, nothing in the market that I can think even touches this. Uh, so a great sort of entry level system for someone looking to start off with their first hi-fi experience or for someone looking for a nice desktop uh, speaker system. Uh, at number three, we have another edifier model, the S1000 Mark II, which in my opinion is the best value for money edifier out there. Uh, it's rated at about 120 watts um, RMS, which is a lot. It does get fairly loud. I haven't done a lot of testing. Uh, but it's it's loud, it's imposing, it has a lot of body to it, uh, great sort of build quality. Uh, it's got digital signal processing, it has uh, APTX Bluetooth, uh, it can process high-res audio, uh, it's got the high-res logo on it. I'm not sure, there are some question marks about that logo and its validity, uh, but it does on paper provide uh, processing for, you know, 24-bit, 192 hertz um, sort of playback. Uh, it is an exceptional, exceptional piece of kit. Uh, definitely worth it for someone who wants uh, an above average sort of stereo um, uh, system feedback uh, without having to break the bank. I think these will retail typically for about 40 grand. I know they're not in stock right now at most places, but I do assume that within the next few weeks, uh, you should find them hitting shelves again. Um, something I'd like to add here is that, you know, there's a lot of 
um, sort of uh, negative feedback when it comes to Chinese made products. Edifier is obviously a Chinese made product. I can tell you that, um, you know, the Edifier uh, product range is exceptional. The S1000 is no different. Uh, reliability with Edifier products is not an issue. They basically last forever. The, I can't think, uh, and we sell a lot of Edifier uh, of the last time that I had a failure on an Edifier. Um, like I mentioned, you know, in previous videos, uh, the remote is a little flimsy, uh, but you know, at the price point, I don't think you can ask for much more than that. So if you're looking for true value for money uh, with every possible sort of connectivity option, besides obviously AirPlay, uh, I'd go with the S1000. Next, we have the Q Acoustics M20. Uh, Q Acoustics, like I mentioned in my previous videos, are a British brand. Uh, the M20 is their sort of active offering. Uh, it's got most of the connectivity options that you would need, uh, including an Oxin, an Optical In. It's got Bluetooth aptX as well as a aptX HD. Uh, it can process digital recordings at up to 24 uh, bit 192 hertz. Um, so generally speaking, you can throw anything that you can throw at it. Uh, like I also mentioned in the previous videos, the form factor on these specific speakers and Q acoustic speakers in general, slightly larger than their competition. And for this reason, they deliver crazy amounts of low end and uh, obviously bass. Uh, so if you're the sort of person who likes a little extra bass, doesn't want to add a subwoofer, plans on, wa plans on watching a lot of movies, uh, then I would go in for the M20 uh, because it ticks uh, sort of all the boxes. The only major drawback that I can think of is that it doesn't come with a preamp. So if you do decide to click in uh, to add on a turntable, you're going to have to either add on a turntable with a built-in preamp or add a separate preamp in between. Next, we have the Magnat Multi-Monitor 220. Magnat's been getting a lot of press recently, uh, specifically for that Transpuls 1500 and 1000 passive speakers, uh, a throwback to the retro sort of horn-based uh, you know, uh, speakers. Um, this is another offering from the Magnat Stable, uh, an active set of speakers uh, with again conventional uh, connectivity options like most of the uh, other speakers we've spoken about on this list, including uh, aptX Bluetooth, uh, Optical In, RCA, AUX, uh, etc. Uh, what separates the Magnat from everybody else is the ability uh, to directly connect a turntable because it has a built-in preamp, a phono preamp. And so for that reason and that reason alone, uh, this had to make the list because as far as I can tell, this is one of the few offerings in terms of active speakers uh, that do have a built-in preamp. Uh, so if you're looking to buy a turntable, you don't want to invest in a preamp, uh, the Magnet Multi-Monitor is, in my opinion, uh, the way to go. Um, as part of our bonus listing for this particular uh, active bookshelf list, I've decided to include the Klipsch, the Fives. Um, again, they've got um, a feature set very common with most of the other guys that I've mentioned on this list. What separates the Klipsch, the Fives is primarily the fact that it has HDMI, which means you can connect it to a TV fairly easily. It also has a phono preamp, uh, which means you can connect to a turntable. Uh, it's got Bluetooth aptX, it's got multiple uh, analog inputs and a sub out. Um, what separates the Klipsch from everybody else is the fact that it is a Klipsch uh, branded product, so it does give you that sort of uh, show-off coefficient. Uh, it's got that clip sound, which means it sounds pretty good, uh, specifically when you're listening to slightly heavier stuff. Um, I think the biggest drawback with the fives is the fact that I think the pricing is slightly off. It's priced at close to a lakh fifteen, so it doesn't necessarily have the same value for money proposition as uh, many of the other products that we've seen on the list so far. Uh, but for people who need the HDMI and need a preamp, I can't see anything else in the market uh, that will provide you with the same performance that the Clips, the Fives do. So that's my list. Um, I think there's a bit of everything for every possible use. I think for those looking strictly for sort of a desktop system, uh, I think the 1280 or the 1700 will do the job. I think for people looking uh, just for streaming, uh, the S1000 is a brilliant uh, sort of device. I think that if you need to attach a turntable and you need a phono preamp, the Magnet Multi-Monitor or the Klipsch 5s will do it. Uh, and obviously if you need HDMI, uh, you've got the Klipsch 5s uh, that'll back you up. Uh, I think what makes this particular list very exciting for me is that the barrier to entry is fairly low. Uh, a young person could get into the stereo hobby or a listening hobby uh, by picking up the 1280DB, which is a great sort of starting uh, point in anyone's uh, stereo system journey. Um, everything that I've spoken about is available in a link uh, in the description below. Uh, we've also got a small, small primer about the basics of active speakers and the technical lingo behind them. Uh, if there's any other comments or suggestions that you have, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, and I hope to see you very soon on the next episode.